going on everybody it's Rev and welcome back to another Dauntless video. In today's video I'm gonna just do a quick victory lap through Terra Escalation as some of the some of the finer details I haven't really shown off yet and uh I've only really shown off the Agoras fight and y'all caught on to a little bit of the uh the Ember Main, the Spores Truck Ember Main which we're actually about to encounter. This behemoth has some of the coolest moves in the game, I tell you what. Um, I will put my build in the description. I missed the interrupt. Unlucky. Um, similar to Ember Main, but not necessarily as much. Uh, instead of doing its interrupt all the time, it kind of does its little like push forward attack all the time. Um, but I want to see if I can get it to do some of its newer moves, because they definitely did. They actually gave the variants a mounting attack. So I'm not, I don't want to go super hard on the DPS. Every time you break a part off of a spore struck behemoth, they use it, leave these uh, little pools of poison on the ground. It might be the modifier though. Oh, it is. Yeah, it is the modifier. And I missed that super sweet attack. That's like my favorite attack in the game. So it's the poison blood modifier. It's not actually the spore struck behemoths. I'm still learning a lot of the stuff about this. This is probably like less than 10 runs in. I haven't really seen everything this has to offer. Uh, but it has a really cool move where it goes Aether Charge and boxes you in on these, uh, with these, like, stone walls. And I want it to do that move because it's really cool. Seems like it's getting stuck on trees. Okay, now it's going Aether Form. Okay, we're Aether Charge. It's got this move, shoots rocks up in the air and slams them back down. There we go. And then you get the end. I've never seen that. But you um you have these mounting. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like I'm I'm getting thrown for a loop here because I'm just like, whoa, I've never seen that before. What's it doing? So I'm I'm taking in some of this for the first time as well. But yeah, this variant's very, very cool. Uh, I love the aesthetic look of it. Um probably one of my more in like one of the more enjoyable variants to fight. So it also has that move and then it charges you, does the interrupt attack. So you don't really have anywhere to go other than to try and interrupt it. Um, it's not really doing it right now, so I don't know what the deal is there. But yeah, that was Spore Struck Ember Main. Uh, a lot of the stuff, I mean, apparently I haven't seen it all, but I mean, we're, we're, we're learning together. It's pretty cool. Uh, I enjoy that variant quite a bit. I do have... Um, some of the shock escalation stuff unlocked. I kind of want to go reckoning just for uh, for giggles. So we're going to do that. 70% extra damage, but I take like 50% more. I think it's a, that's one of the uh, shock or not shock. I keep saying shock when I mean to say Terra. So I apologize, but I'm pretty sure that reckoning is specific only to Terra escalation. Um, I also am using the new limited time tonics that increase crit chance. Uh, you can get virulent impact in this escalation. Uh, we might see it somewhere along the way here. Please don't belly flop on me. Sports truck Charon. I want to get, I want to get Kara back out of the equation here. And then, um, hello? Trog doesn't want to fight me. Okay. Get Kara back out of the equation. And let's take a peek at some of Charog's moves. Um, I've, I have a soft spot for Charog. Uh, for out of the most cuddliest behemoths, Charog is at the top of my list. Um, this Charog doesn't need to go Aether Form in order to turn on its Poison Jets. It has a double slam and then it charges forward. Um, it's basically just combining a lot of the other attacks that Charog have, but using them all at once. Uh, this does give you hit stun, so it's kind of annoying. Uh, I wish that Phoenix Labs would add more things that uh, just, you know, it, we have this bar, this poison bar now. Uh, let's just take away the hit stun and just have the meter like build up, you know, like in Bloodborne or all those other games that have, oh, that's the lava spray, leaves chaos on the ground. Charge attack. 
Hail Swat. Uh, it still uh, charges forward, just like Firebrand. And there's a move. I, yeah, this move is kind of like the one that turns its jets on for a little bit and then body slams. But you can see that this play, like the battlefield gets really chaotic really fast. Um, other than that, there's not too much more. This move is a lot. It seems like it's a lot slower. Maybe I just haven't fought Firebrand in a while. But it does seem like the fist slam or like the little sweep it does. That's arm is a little bit slower the tail uh the tail move isn't as annoying it doesn't do like like those back hops and it does not sure what hit me there it seemed like there was supposed to be uh like a nova or something and it just didn't exist not sure what happened there i have to go back and watch the footage it should do it for Charog, though. I'm gonna go ahead and maybe kill it with Mal. Oh. All right. And uh, just take a moment to like, take a look at some of the environments. The first area is just kind of like standard tree to area, but you can actually go and explore a little bit. Check out some of the uh, destroyed areas here. Unfortunately, this is like the only place I found that had any um, semblance of like civilization or like because uh, this is what's it called Arbor Arbor home or something like that. The this is like the only place that really indicated that there was anybody living here. Nothing else is super destroyed, but maybe it's just my my eyes not working properly. But we'll take a peek here. Um, Pact of Swiftness is pretty enticing considering it's round three. Got thorn pods and bleed out vines. Mm. Sure, we'll do Pact. That's fine. Kind of just doing like YOLO. Oh, there's another. I'm, I'm going to detour for science. I want to know if there's like any lore clues, you know? Like... I never really take the time to do that in a lot of video games, but for some reason, Dauntless Lord just like really it doesn't seem like we can. Yeah, that it must be all for show. For some reason, Dauntless Lord just kind of hits different for me. I don't know why. Uh, one cool thing about Sword in this patch is you can parry. Um, I didn't do it that time. You can parry uh, Quill Shot Quills. There we go. Just did it. Some patches you can, some patches you can't. It's really annoying. Uh, in this patch you can. Feels good. Nothing special about this quill shot, so I'll just go ahead and kill it. There are only two variants. I see that um, talked about a lot in the YouTube comments uh, for this patch, as well as um, Reddit, is that People are like, where's the third one? Where's the third one? Uh, there is only two. It's Agoras and the two. And uh, we've gotten to see them both. So that's really lucky that we got both in this run. But yeah, the Emberman is kind of the star of the show for me. Uh, I actually really enjoy that variant. Um, I would really like to see... Um, this is kind of unrelated, but I was talking about this with Cyber Messiah. Uh, I would really like to see a... Agoras trial just because the fight is a little bit different and because by the time you get to the keystone behemoths you just kind of push them over and uh i don't really enjoy that about escalation i wish the the keystone behemoths were like the tough fight like it, it's almost assured victory um in escalation when you're up against one behemoth and i don't really enjoy that here's a new uh amp i always forget what they're called uh because <laughs> i play so many roguelike games they all call them something different uh, Pact of Hunger. For the next encounter, your consumables are disabled. Afterward, gain 10% life spiel, steal, spiel. Uh, steal, this is at plus two. I'm probably just gonna take, like, Duelist Precision, or I could probably just take Thrill to Hunt, even though it's not really that good for round four. But it is what it is. I'll definitely be popping tonics and stuff. This part's really cool. You got, like, a bunch of giant mushrooms, a bridge, bunch of bridged areas uh one thing that 
I'll show off here after round four is that you can actually look back and see all of the areas that you were in very, very uh, clearly, or at least semi-clearly, uh, when you're up on the platform when you go up to fight Agoras, which I really like. Something that you might not take time to do is kind of look back at where you came from. But this map is beautiful. I love uh, pretty much everything about it. It's got lore notes. It's got really, uh, other than the first area and the trees, uh, the arenas are just really nice to look at and they're not annoying. Like some of the other escalation ones. Like behemoths don't get stuck or just like stop working. Uh, at least to my knowledge, I'm sure we're going to experience something somewhere. I don't want to the leave a disclaimer there i'm sure someone will experience something whether it be on console or pc i've been getting uh scrave and shroud a lot for round four which is like literally my least favorite combination in this game it's up there with ember main and rift stalker at the same time i tried to just kind of like no look hit that shroud but i'm just kind of unga bunga on the keyboard while i'm talking about escalation right now i don't know what just happened i don't know how scrape got knocked over i'm out of state i don't even know who to go for at this point i'm gonna get frozen again but yeah i've been getting this combination a lot i should probably pop tonics because this is uh not fun the opposite of fun. I hate this combination. At least it's like budget scrape, not winner. Well, I guess this is winter horn model. Is this winter horn? Tell me in the comments. I, uh, dude, I hate scrape so much that I literally avoid all possible. Uh, for some reason, I'm just blanking on what winter horn scrape or normal scrape looks like. There we go. Feels good. Yeah, Scrave is literally my least favorite behemoth. I, ever since they changed the Caltrops to be like seeking instead of um, homing or not, or they're like homing now instead of just like the straight line that they used to be. And uh, yeah, I just, <laughs> I don't want this video to turn into like a I hate Scrave video, but I tell you what, I'm very passionate about my hatred for, uh, for Scrave. I hate getting frozen. Them with the shot. Okay, never mind. False alarm. There it is. Zug zug on the keyboard while it's shot. Almost dead. Nice. Then we'll go fight Agoras and it will be a grand old time. You. Are you dead, Trav? Are you feeling it, Mr. Shroud? Oop, didn't mean to do that. But I did. Sit down. Sit down. There we go. There we go. We got the synchronization of the clone and Shroud. Let's see if we can get, like, shock form or something. Or virulent. I'll take whatever. Bonds of Conflict, and then we have Shock Form plus one, um, which is upping the amount. So it's normally 10 seconds, I believe, and then you get uh, four seconds per level. Not really anything to write home about. I probably wouldn't recommend leveling up Shock Form. Sorry, my mustache is just... It's up in there, you know what I'm saying? Here's Agoras. Love this behemoth. One of my favorites, probably top five. So cool. So I am power boost three um, on this run. So I'm probably gonna be a little bit more powerful. When you're at range, Agris will use its left hand to kind of whip at you. Uh, not very accurate as you can see. <laughs> but a very long telegraph, but you repeater players probably need to watch out for that one. So left hand, to my knowledge, are the AOEs and 
Yeah, you can get grabbed. It's like a mini freeze, but less annoying. And then it all, so it does like the range attacks and the AOEs. With the left, it also has like really fast whip attacks. And then it has like the big sweeping uh, AOEs with its meaty, meaty arm. Agarus has a case of only working out one side. You know what I'm saying? Um, I never got hit by that, so I don't know how much damage it does. Apparently not very much. A power boost three. It will pick itself up and then slam back down. It creates poison around it. Um, if you move far away, I believe it will like start uprooting very slowly and start moving towards you. Uh. Go ahead and go back in. It doesn't have a lot of options to do anything when uh, a, a Slayer is close to it, especially if you have Iceborne, like the poison doesn't tick for enough. So um, being close isn't too much of a hindrance as long as you don't get hit by the slams at early, early levels. I tried to pop Avenging Overdrive there, it didn't work. I've never actually successfully beat this with sword, so... Um, who knows, you might see me die here. So Agris does create all these orbs. You need to sever the roots. And then um, Agris will also still be attacking occasionally. It's not as chaotic, but it will be causing uh, poison clouds as well as um, shockwaves and stuff to just look out for in the arena. But Power Boost 3 is making quick work of these roots. This is nice. Let's use the Drass Lantern for 1,000 damage. This is pretty insane. There we go. And then you get a big old window. Oh, oh. So you can't... It seems like you can't really hit the head. I don't know how many breaks Agris actually has. Uh, it seems like only three, though. I could be incorrect. I need to, need to double check that. Can parry the AoE is one of the perks of being a sword player. And that's a dead Agarus. Uh, someone pointed out that Agarus actually cr doesn't dissipate into Aether. Instead leaves behind kind of just like a, a husk. Which is very, very cool. One of the only Aether... Uh, one of the only behemoths that isn't affected by the etheric breakdown effect. Um, I don't know what that means, but it is a cool little lore note if you're a lore head like me. That was a good catch by the person that left that in the, uh, the previous video. But a very cool fight. I really love that Keystone Behemoth. I think it's the best one out of all of them. I would hope that more fights in Dauntless carry on these, like, very, um, what's the word? Concrete. I'm not going to say like very, very concrete mechanics like the Aether Charge. You know, it goes Aether Charge, creates those, and um, it creates those roots. You got to sever them. That's honestly how Boreas should have been. It should have ice blocked itself, and then you kill the minions and have to break it out. That'd be nice. And then it's just creating like, I don't know, f frost spikes occasionally or something. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Terra Escalation is shaping up to be something that I'm really excited for, even even after playing it for uh, several runs. And yeah, I'm just really impressed with the level of quality of this uh, patch. You know, the Hunt Pass cosmetics, um, while they might not be for everybody, they're really for me. I really enjoy them. Uh, I think this Hunt Pass season is one of the strongest that I've seen in a long time. Um, one thing I'm going to have to make a video on is the Hunt Pass locations because some of them are kind of crafty uh but that'll be a separate video but the hunt pass keystone the variant behemoths are very very uh just they're cool they're fresh and uh aesthetically probably the most pleasing like that's what a terra behemoth or an infested behemoth would look like and uh i'm down with it uh agaris is Ultra armor isn't for me, but I know Doe likes it a lot. I, I think people are, uh, will like it. It's very Warframe. I'm not super sci-fi. I'm more fantasy. But 
I digress. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a, leave a like if you did. Um, subscribe if you want to see more Dauntless content. And I'll catch you in the next one. Have a lovely rest of your day. That's it. Have a lovely day. Peace out.